with energy. A, a big heat win for Ramsey as we now open up. Heat number five, Jordy Smith, Baron Momia, Emai Kalani Duvall. Two surfers representing the Hawaiian Islands. Baron from Oahu and Emai from Maui. Jordy Smith, the longest serving member of the championship crazy. tour. Man, that rookie season. Joe on the back end for the former champion out here in Rio. And then B, who made the quarters last year at this event. Great opening layback carve right there for Mamiya. Remember, he already got a win earlier this season over at Pipeline and comboed it up well with a nice tail slide right there at the end. So I remember a couple of years ago, I, I had an interview with him and I told him, hey, straight up, you inspired me to want to pursue the qualifying series. And guess what? He's still doing it. Now, Emai Kalani Duval getting started. He's been warming up a lot on the lay days with Baron this week. Fades back in the pocket and sneaks one in. Bit more vertical on the end section. He'll be patient to ride away. Solid heat, Joe. Waiting for his last score, and this is last to Emai Kalani. Yeah, so his first ride and solid combo, especially in a really tight space right there, too. Just to be able to fit in that second one was very difficult. Oftentimes, you're forced to make those adjustments on the fly. I know yes. a lot of surfers uh, who are not in the Olympics are using, you know, next month as a time to really focus on equipment and just focus on surfing outside of the jersey as well. Where do you fall when it comes to the length of the boards nowadays, too? Because it seems like the new thing is kind of going back up a little bit. Uh, and Ramsey, straight to the round of 16. Mm. Backside blast there for Baron Mamiya to go with his 4.6. One sunset is a wild card, so able to protect the spots at home. And now we're waiting to see when he can win on the road. When this guy's on... Joe, I think he's one of the most talented surfers in the world, a very complete surfer too, and he has really no fear when it comes to attacking these big sections. Look at how compact he was coming off of the bottom right there, so should be a decent backup by today's standards, but you know, all in all... Like, hang on, I've got <laughs> yeah. to change my whole year. He had plans for the Challenger Series at the time. Right. Then he had to go, okay, now how do I have longevity on the top 34? And he had to make adjustments, learn about new boards, change shapers, started working with Britt Merrick and with Mick and Joel Parkinson and Taj. As we look at Baron Mamiya, nice rampy section there to throw the tail. Has control to right away, just bringing a little brilliance to a softer inside corner. He's been one of the standouts so far as look at the replay here. Great opening carve right there. Bit of a softer section, as you were mentioning, but did very well to time this and not get ahead of himself either. Throws the tail forward, brings it around, and then just a little bit of a cleanup right here on the inside. So looking to improve on the 3.7. Seems like he actually doesn't, Joe. That one's going to be a throwaway, and it might just be because of a softer section. Mm -hmm. But I mean, still, but it does for your confidence. You haven't fallen on a wave so far. Things are looking brilliant for Baron Mamiya at the moment, but he does need to be... Four surfers representing Hawaii on tour. We saw Seth with his heat win earlier. Mm -hmm. Then world number one, John Florence in third in the last heat. And Jordy Smith checks out of that wave quickly. He's a heel and he embraces it. I love that about him. I, I, <laughs> I love that he's not afraid to be himself. Jordy's up now. Left shoulders off very quickly and forces him just to do a little open face hook and steps out for Gabe this year is to get a major win at home for the first time at the CT level as we come off of two turns on the back end of Baron Mamiya. No, strong right there, Joe, especially the second one had really small amount of speed to be able to get over the white water right there towards the end and with just over 14 minutes on the clock, still looking to improve on the 3.7. I gotta be thinking he's gonna be doing it here. Didn't do it on the smaller wave before, but this one a bit larger in size just to be able to get into the pocket right here. Beautiful opening snap. And as I said before, had a minimal amount of speed to be able to get into the lip for the second one. Strong stuff right there by Mamiya. So Baron hanging on to that end section and tries to improve on a 3-7. Emai Kalani now up. Throws the wrap a little bit stuck there in transition, and the rest of the wave's gonna run on without him. Ramsey mentioned how many times he's been here, how he loves the energy, but also saying how difficult the wave can be, and that was a good example of Emai getting a little bit lost on that run. He's struggling just to find a proper wave. And Jordy on this one as well. Ooh. Just had to find the lip, come through with a huge win. 
But if you can steal that momentum early, that can help you go a long way. As we've got Emai setting up his first turn. Big hammer on the back end with the fin ditch, taking him a little bit of time to ride away. In these next six minutes, this turn though, big fan of it, Joe. Creative, really dynamic. Unfortunately for him, does take him a bit to ride out of that. Chipping into that left in the same zone as Mamiya. Snap to slide. Wave staying pretty full on the open face, so Baron trying to fill in the gaps, but he'll have to kick out. So one maneuver opportunities for the Hawaiians. Scores that everybody else has, you're looking to push it just a bit more. So, you know, the snap from Baron wasn't bad. The wave just let him down afterwards. So that's going to be a throwaway for him, given the quality of the waves we can see out there. So you look at the deep bottom turn right here. I mean, still some strong stuff. He's always surfing in the pocket and he finds those critical sections that really allows for this type of surfing too. So at the moment, I mean, even if this turn isn't going into his top two, a lot of good positive signs in at least the good range out there. Then Jordy Smith as well, Mitch. Yeah, a quick one there for Jordy. He struggled to find. For a potential shot to be at Lowers this September and for what he did at Lowers when it was a regular season event, he'd be uh, in his happy place as we look at couple of combinations on the back end of Baron Mamiya once again. In its first three editions, as we look at the replay here of the heat leader Mamiya once again, opening carve much better on the second one right there, Joe. Only looking to improve on a 4.17. Feel like he's gonna be able to do that right here. Great use of priority, by the way. And he sends the pressure right there of Jordy, wanting to catch this wave underneath him. Made sure that he was on this one and capitalized on a golden opportunity, especially the extension of the second turn right there, Joe. Quality stuff by B. Solid surfing right in the critical part of the wave and turning a little bit extra to show the judges that he wants it. Trying to break out of the fours is Emai on the right. So DeVault right here looking for a big snap, Joe. Almost pulled it right there. I love the commitment. Uh, I love it. As we see a nice clean snap right off the lip and then throwing ah. the tail out, but falling on the second maneuver. Something he really needed there. Yeah, Sean Ward, longtime competitor. He actually picked up a QS win in Brazil. As we look at last of Jordy Smith here. Yeah, he struggled once again to be able to find any kind of open face or just the lip line outside of that turn. It's really been a few mishaps on the last few waves for Jordy, so not being able to get the completion right there. So now you're seeing how important that last turn would have been for Jordy Smith. Mm -hmm. He's still chasing a 5-2-8. Up quickly is Marin Mamiya, backhand float late to the end section. He'll go down. Nothing changing to his top two, less than 90 seconds to go. Jordy Smith will take off on this wave with 22 seconds to go. Great first turn. Belts it in the pocket again. Wants to show the judges that he felt good on that one. And he'll ride away. He'll leave it on that wave to see if he can turn the heat. Just the one turn on the left. It was a critical maneuver, though, looking to improve on a 4A3 here on the right. Down the line snap, much more committed on the second one. So, I mean, if he improves just slightly on the 4A3, his requirement is going to be right around a 5, Joe. So, looking at the replay here in slow-mo, down the line snap, beautiful turn right there. In the pocket, a bit of a smaller wave. But nice, precise surfing in the pocket once again with the second combination. Important win for Jordy Smith since he's right on that yeah. cutoff mark at world number five. He wants to build up that ranking and result before he heads over to Cloud Break. Especially when you have world number six coming in the right in the heat right next after his big heat win for Jordy Smith. Jordy, you found that wave in the dying minute of the heat. Talk us through that. Yeah, just the waves are really difficult to be in the right spot. So, she's I'll take it whether it's in the last minute or the first. Um, yeah, wins a winner. Yeah, you won here already in Brazil. So how do you feel to compete with this whole crowd? Yeah, the crowd's uh, electrifying. And um, I've had a couple of good results here in the past. I've won the event in uh, Baja de Juca and then got second here to Philippe. So I've had a bit of success. But um, every year the conditions are different. Every day the waves are different. So just take it for what the, whatever the day brings and try to do your best. Okay, congratulations. Back to you guys.